Casey Neistat represents, to most people, I think, what's possible through a career on YouTube. He's had a successful short film career, landed a multi-million dollar acquisition from CNN for his company, and is insanely popular. So how did Neistat get here after being a high school dropout? I think if you'd ask him, he'd say what he has said a million times already. It was a lot of work. Neistat's hardly the only one doing this. He's part of a growing trend of people that have been selling the silver bullet of success to be work. And I'm here to tell you today, if you're going to be successful, you gotta be willing to give up sleep. The simple answer here is very simply that you need to, <laughs> you need to work harder and faster. There's really nothing else. Why, 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 why? This idea of working harder is always the answer has an almost frat boyish following to it, and it's hard to miss why it's so appealing. It's an athlete's mentality, hard work. There's a real drama and excitement to the struggle, and everything's always within your control. But is that all it took for Neistat to go from broke to here? I don't think so. Hard work was necessary for Neistat's success, but not sufficient. Success is not solely a function of hard work. It's highly dependent on the quality of the career opportunity or idea that you're pursuing, Think of the millions of people working minimum wage jobs in America who are working hard, sometimes 80 hours a week just to stay afloat. For these people, it's not about hard work. But if hard work isn't enough, how did Neistat become so successful? So let me explain. In the book Outliers, Malcolm Gladwell analyzes people who excel at their craft. He finds that good timing plays a big role in why many people become successful, even Bill Gates. He talks about one of the secrets to Bill Gates' success was that he had access to a computer that he could practice coding on years before most people did. So Bill Gates literally had thousands of hours of programming practice under his belt before anyone else got started. And this competitive advantage positioned him perfectly to take advantage of the PC revolution that started when the Altair computer came out in 1975. Well, just like the computer revolution, there has been a filmmaking revolution since YouTube came out in 2005. And like Gates, Neistat got a critical head start in filmmaking before most would-be YouTubers had even picked up a camera. See, Neistat first got into professional filmmaking with a guy named Tom Sachs in 2001. He developed a lot of his style here, and he continued honing his craft of filmmaking with several videos and an HBO special. So that later in 2010, when he fully embraced the YouTube space, his content was noticeably more refined and substantive than his peers. And this is part of the magic of watching Neistat. His style seems to come fully formed right out of the gate. Whereas most YouTubers have to find their voice within the first few years, Neistat had already found his with nearly a decade of practice under his belt. So with this in mind, the final piece of the story becomes obvious. Neistat's rise to be YouTube's favorite vlogger. When Neistat entered the vlog space in 2015, he was joining a group of vloggers with little film experience, which makes it clear why Neistat's quality stands above the rest. <laughs> It's also why you see comments like this on his vlog all the time. It's a bit like watching a professional baseball player play in a high school game. He just had way more experience. So Neistat's timing with filmmaking was perfect. Had he started filmmaking earlier, he might have been too far into a career to switch to YouTube, which is why most career filmmakers miss the YouTube boat. And had he started later, he'd just be another vlogger trying to figure out his style. But what happened was the combination of the right idea, the right work ethic, and the right timing. That's what made Casey Neistat successful. Okay, so why does it matter that Neistat somewhat undersells the role Luck played in his success? Luck, you know, all that other education, all that, like, it's not even in the same pie chart. I think what bothers me is a lot of people see Neistat and want to become filmmakers like him and are told that work is the only thing that's standing in their way. But this isn't actually true. What made Neistat go from a small indie filmmaker to the cover of GQ magazine in less than two years was bringing nearly 15 years of professional film experience into a field where most people were total amateurs. But that has changed. The idea of being a vlogger is worth a lot less now, now that there are hundreds of people occupying that space and producing regular content, and their content's getting better. And I guess I just want to tell anybody with the hunger to be successful that the next Neistat probably won't be a vlogger. It will be someone who utilizes a timely competitive advantage to dominate the market space. Or something like that. I don't know. I'm just a YouTuber. And as a YouTuber, this is the part of the video where I tell you for the millionth time what you already know. That you can subscribe and like and watch another video if you want. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next Wednesday with another video.